Let's do this. You guys, it's nine on three. It's Friday night. It's time for Dino One. Lady, uh, Dino One. Just Dino One. Just single one. Dino One Oh One. I'm excited. Um, if this is your first time at Dino One Oh One, thank you sincerely for coming. We're glad you're here. Uh, buckle up. If this is not your first time at Dino One Oh One. Welcome back, you fucking weirdos. Tonight, I'm so excited. One of my absolute favorite science communicators is here. Someone who, like, I can't think of someone who I'd rather hear wax poetic about their absolute favorite animal encounters. I'm excited to talk to Karina Newsom about those. Also, we have a brand new game tonight. I'm incredibly excited to play. But per usual, I'm not alone. I cannot do this by myself. I'm joined with, by my co-hostess with the mostess, the sauce to my pasta. Sure, why not? A woman who's coming out of her cave and she's been doing just fine. Ladies and gentlemen, Christina Gustavich. I just pronounced her name wrong for the first time in so long. Gustavich. Oh my Thank God. Thank you. Hey, that's Sorry. okay. It takes practice. Uh, Gustavich, like a gust of wind. Welcome. Welcome back. Uh, in case you don't know how to use Zoom yet, I have some helpful hints tonight. Uh, so you're going to be recording tonight. We keep these. If you don't want your face to be part of that, that's cool. You can just turn off your video down there. We love to see your face though. Um, we also love to see you going off in the chat. You're going to maybe have some questions for our guest Bert, for sure. You're going to have reactions, strong opinions, hot takes, send them to the chat. Um, I'm collecting questions as we go. We will have question and answer time at the end. So if we don't get to it right away, it's cool. We'll get to it. Um, what else? Oh, most importantly, I have some drinking rules for you. I have some drinking rules for you. As with everything tonight, it's as participatory as you would like it to be. We invite you to drink when you hear the following things. <sighs> oh boy, maybe grab some water too, because if you hear anything about birds, because birds are dinosaurs, you will take a sip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you hear us, or if you see someone in the chat, make a groany dad joke, something corny, something that makes you go, okay, you'll take a sip. And finally, a special visual clue for tonight. You know, we're doubling down here. A special visual clue for tonight is if you see a bird with its mouth wide open. If you see you just a bird, pour a drink right into it. Just pour a drink right into that open bird mouth. <laughs> and while we're talking about celebratory imbibations, uh, Nick Triling is spending her bachelorette party with us tonight. What? 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 We have made it, Mom. Uh, Congratulations and happy night, Nick Triling. Hey. Yeah. Oh, I love it. We're going to pick on you later too. Don't worry. So start drinking a little bit more. Um, you guys, we always want to know like how many times you've actually been to Dino 101. And we also do a ton of polls here. So to get that ball rolling, how many times have you been here? Are you but a newborn, newly hatched chickadee, two to five, six to 10, or you know and are a majority shareholder of Sex Lakes Incorporated? Okay. Explanations. I'm sorry. I, I I'm a newly hatched yep. <laughs> chickadee, yep. and I keep seeing sex lakes, and I'm like, yeah. I need some more information. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Karina, you know what? We usually do this later, but Christina, we're already here. Can you please inform Karina and all of our newbies, which seem to be a few new people, uh, what exactly a sex lake is? I love explaining sex lake. This is a favorite paleontological idea that we like to talk about at Dino 101. One probably pervert paleontologist said that. Uh, large sauropods, the big long necks, must have had to reproduce in a body of water because they would have otherwise crushed each other's bones. So we take loving, uh, sexy, sexy trips to the sex lake. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Gotta go to the sex Wait, I'm gonna need a minute to process that. Um, wow. Boy, I'm for paleontology. Yeah, it's all yeah. about the bones. Listen, Karina, you're already on the screen. I like that you're just drinking wine. Or Moscato, right? Moscato. Moscato. Okay, Moscato. Straight from the bottle. You're already here, so I'm going to reintroduce you. You're the co-organizer of Black Birders Week. You're the community engagement manager at Georgia Audubon. And I already said you're absolutely one of my favorite science communicators ever. Where are you right now? Right now, I am in Atlanta, Georgia, home of the Atlanta Falcons, which are only cool because they're called Falcons. 
listen, well, you're getting ahead of yourself. We're going to get there in a minute. But speaking of bird-like things, at every Dino 101, we have a dino of the day. And should you choose to, we task you to draw it, ink and paper digitally. Some people have made like cupcakes and cookies shaped like the dino of the day. It's bonkers. So today's dino of the day, which I'm about to introduce. Remember, at the end of our time, we're going to go around the room, hold up your tremendous, they're always tremendous, paleo art renderings. Today's dino of the day, Karina, I know that your favorite dino is Velociraptor. We've done Velociraptor before, so we made a slight tweak, and today we're going to talk about Microraptor. So Microraptor is the first dinosaur. It was, uh, it's about 120 million years old. This is the first dinosaur that we ever found that had flight feathers on both its legs and its arms. So this is Microraptor. Here's another very beautiful view of this guy with the black what? iridescence, a little size scale, you know, about the size of a cat, not a large dromaeosaur. Um, and your prompt is not just to draw and render Microraptor. But Microraptor just got vaxxed. It's time for Hot Girl Summer. So you and Microraptor, you guys are vaxxed. You're doing your Hot Girl Summer best. Whatever that means to you, that is the dino of the day prompt. I'm excited to see these drawings. Enough messing around. It is time to play everyone's favorite game. Karina, are you nervous to play dino or not a dino? I am, yes, I am shaking. Okay. I'm sweating. Okay. I will tell you, no one has ever lost. Uh, and you're in good, you're in good hands because everyone in the chat is going to help you out. Here's how this works. I have 10 different animal names, some of which are real actual dinosaurs, some of which we have totally made up. Your job is simply to discern the real dinosaurs from the fake. If you need a spelling, I'm happy to spell any of these. And again, the chat is sometimes helpful. <laughs> We'll leave it Please there. don't leave me astray, y'all. I can't Apparently be the first. We have, I want to draw your attention to 69 people in the gallery. Nice. So you can look at all of them for help. Okay. <laughs> this is, thank you for saying the maturity bar. That's the maturity bar we operate here at Dino 101. All right. No more messing around. Dino or not a dino. Animal number one Savannasaurus. Savannasaurus. Yeah. What do y'all think? Please help me. Well, immediate, some immediate yeses in the chat. That looks. Okay. Like, you'll have to know, I'm a bird person, but dinosaurs <laughs> are a completely new world to me. So I need some like legit, don't throw me off. All right, so Savannasaurus. Savannasaurus. I'm a lot of yeses. I'm also like, I love Savannah, Georgia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna say that it, oh my God. I'm gonna say it's a, it's a dinosaur. I'm gonna say it yeah. is a dinosaur. Yeah. Great start, one for one. Uh, thank you for reminding me, there is a theme for the not dinos, if you or anyone in the chat can get the theme for the not dinos, uh, 5,000 internet high fives. Animal number two, Iris Opteryx. Iris Opteryx. Data, I need your help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Data thinks no, Iris Opteryx. No, 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 no. Couple quick no's. Quick um, chat, okay. Yeah, spell okay. Iris, spell that first part. I-R-I-S, okay. Opteryx. Iris Opteryx. We're getting a lot of no's. There's like one yes from Lindsay. Okay. Iris Opterix. I'm going to say, thank you. It's shiny. Someone complimented my top. I'm going to oh. say no. <laughs> Your top is shiny, and Iris Opterix is not a dinosaur. You're <laughs> two for two. Well done. Number three, Ava Ceratops. Thank Ava you. Ceratops. A -V A -V -A Ceratops. <laughs> Iris, Ava. I'm trying to see if there's a thing. What think? Iris. Mm. I'm seeing lots of no's in the chat. Um, oh. Ava Sarah. No, 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 no. Not real. That is your first incorrect. Ava Sarah ah! is a dinosaur. You're two and one. You're still doing well. Don't worry. Next. The only person who's ever gotten all 10 isn't even a person. It's a dinosaur. So don't worry. You're fine. Okay. Next. Dollionator. Dollionator. How do you spell that? What is that? D <laughs> I can't tell you. Uh, D A H L I A N A T O R, Dalinator. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no way. That is correct. That's not a nice yes. three in one. I like oh! your hints. Y'all are giving me hints in the chat. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. I think the chat's on to us. Yes. Magnapolia. Magnapolia. I'm also not a plant person, so this might be <laughs> this is also a problem. Um, no, that is not real. <laughs> yeah, it's real. It's a real dinosaur. <laughs> Sorry. You should just 
said that nobody lost because now here we are. You're doing great. You're, you're three and two. You're doing fine. Not bad. Not bad. You're, yeah, you're not. You're, you're fine. Three and two. Here we go. Next, Bagonikis. Bagonikis. Okay. We're getting a lot of no's. One yes. That yes. Are you confident? Shana's not. Shana's not sure. If Shana's not sure, then I'm not sure. One more time. Bagonikis. No, not real. That is correct. That is oh. not real. You're now four and two. Next, Shanzia. Shanzia. S H A N X I A. Shanzia. No, that is not a box line. It really does. That's Franzia. That's close. Oh. Okay. We're going to go with yes, that's real. Yeah. That is real. That's a real dinosaur. You're now five and two. You're doing great. Karina, you only have to get six. If you don't get six, we boot you out of the room, but you've got five. So you're doing great. Uh, Here we go. Liliops. No. No. Okay, I think you're on to hey. the theme. Okay. I think you may be on to the theme. Phil, Liliops is not a dinosaur. We got two more. You are currently six and two. Can't lose. Ned Colbertia. Ned what? Colbertia. Yeah. Ned Colbertia. N E D. What do you think? N E D C O L B E R T I A. Ned Colbertia. Like, I feel like it sounds like some some guy's first and last name and scientists are into that. So I'm going to say yes. Yeah. 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 I can't okay. make up a weird name like that. Uh, <laughs> seven and two. All right. Last but not least, to go a solid, respectable eight for 10. Like a solid B. I'll take that every <laughs> night. Last but not least. Wait, have you figured out the theme for the not dinos? I have. I think, I think it's flowers. You think it's flowers. Maybe this last one will give it away. Last but not least. Rhododendrodon. Rhododendrodon. <laughs> hey, that is not real. And flower. Okay. That plants. Is... Maybe plants more generally. No, well, it was flowers. Rhododendrons, iris. We had dahlia, uh, begonias, and lily. That is, yep. Nailed it. Nailed it. I could have done it without y'all. Thank you. I also learned recently that you can get high in rhododendron honey somehow. That's all I know, though. So don't don't quote me on that. Like right. how? how? Like smoke or how do you how do you get high off of it how do you achieve the high again that's literally all i know i mean i don't know if you eat the honey how would you i don't know if you could small well, honey is kind of like resin i've said too much we're gonna we'll leave it, we'll leave it for that. all right so you you won the game uh before we get into what i'm excited here like some of your basically your top five at least can we say top five your top yeah. five animal bird encounters the, the great thing karina so you guys when i asked karina to do this i was like yo i just want to hear you tell us about your favorite animal encounters and without prompting she named five different bird encounters and as we know birds are literally dinosaurs that is why you're here tonight karina what can i say now before we do this we have one more poll christine and i spent a long time thinking about what kind of poll we wanted to do to get into it oh, now we just had easter easter was a couple when, last weekend was that last weekend yeah last weekend this last weekend, I don't know if you guys have heard this, but the Easter Bunny is retiring. True story. So next year, we are going to need a new animal to replace the Easter Bunny. And so in a moment, we need you to vote. Are we going to have an Easter Smilodon, an Easter Megatherium, an Easter Platybelodon, an Easter Tectolic, or an Easter Titanoboa? What is going to replace the Easter Bunny? Please vote now. Karina, you can't vote, but you can tell us what you think. Yeah, so to be honest, the... Platy Belladon yeah. is extreme, is drawing, I, I'm drawn to it. Okay, okay. I think on why. Okay. All right, uh, Christina. That's where I'm at. Yeah, I'm leaning Titanoboa. I think uh, no legs representation is important and all these other animals, you know, the Easter Bunny is very leggy, mm. very, very leggy, okay. you know, Titanoboa. Well, no. you guys, both of you guys are wrong, according to the rest of the group, because apparently we have a lot of um, gra giant ground sloth and avocado lovers here because the Easter Megatherium has taken it. We're going to have a giant, I guess avocados are kind of like nature's not egg. Never mind. The egg, egg of oh. the plant kingdom. The egg of the plant kingdom? Not really yeah. biologically speaking. Not really. Also, you guys, I, I was so excited about our Easter poll. I forgot to show you and prove to you these are actual dinosaurs we talked about. Savannosaurus is a giant sauropod, a long-necked dinosaur from uh, Australia. We got Avaceratops, kind of a relatively small ceratopsian cousin of Triceratops. 
We got Magnapolia. What a donk. Horus. Yeah, with that cool crest on its head. It's a type of hadrosaur. Uh, we also, of course, Shanzia, which is just a badass looking ankylosaur from China. And last but not least, Ned Colbertia. Such a weird looking ornithomimosaur. I love ornithomimosaurs. So weird, so feathered. And speaking of feathers, enough messing around. Karina, we have five different, at least five. We'll see how much time we can get through. We have five different animals that you want to tell us about great encounters with. The first I'm going to ask you about is the chickadee. You specifically asked if we should talk about the chickadee. Hit us. Why, why are we talking about chickadee? Chickadees are a species that a lot of people encounter, especially if you're on the east side of North America, right? And I had the distinct pleasure, okay? There are a couple different species of chickadee in, the, in, in North America. I had the distinct pleasure of spying on a nest of chickadees. And I am going to share my screen with you all to show you some of the behind the scenes, behind the curtain footage that I got of the chickadee. So chickadees are cute, oh, cute as hell, right? So take a look. Boom, gonna blow it up for you, right? Like you can't help but just like love that face, okay? So last breeding season, last spring, I got to take a look um, at the nesting behavior of the chickadee. Now just watch when it starts to incubate. First of all, this is just so cute. Watch it shimmy, hold on, hold on. Wait, ooh! Ooh, shake it, shake it. Shake it. That. You know, like that's, that's fucking cute. So I got to see all kinds of things go on behind the scenes, right? Um, incubating the eggs. I got to see some of the ways that they compensate for um, the loss of nutrients that they experience when they lay their eggs, right? So when the babies hatch, the mother actually eats the eggs to take the calcium back and absorb it back into her bones. That's freaking cool, right? Like it's almost similar, like say if we ate the amniotic sac, almost kind of. Wow. You know, so there is, there is a benefit to that. People do that, right? I mean... I've heard of it. Yeah. I, I've heard of people like saving at least the umbilical cord and eating it later, you know, to each their own. I'm Fair not mad at it. <laughs> so it takes a lot of energy to raise some chicks, right? So take a look at this, right? If you, if you even look at the chicks, you can tell that they're very much satisfied. I mean, like look at the chick on the left-hand side, on his back, wait till the mom gets out the, gets out the way. There we go. Like you're you you can't lay the way this chick is laying unless you are fully satisfied uh, with lots of yummy worms, lots of yummy treats, right? By your parents. The chickadees are also like really good co-parents. Um, raising six chicks and making sure that they're all well fed takes the investment of two parents. All right. So just watching this play out is so beautiful. Now. I mentioned the eggshell eating to regain some nutrients, right? That's a common behavior across birds. And as far as I knew, that was pretty much the only kind of thing that they ate that was kind of produced by the chicks. I was wrong. So as the chicks eat and eat and eat all day long, fed by both parents, what happens is the mom won't just eat the shell when they hatch. All right, watch this. She also eats the poop. Y'all, when I saw this, I thought they took the anal, uh, the, the, the poop sack and flew it outside and dropped it somewhere. That was my impression, right? That's what I heard. Nah, y'all. From the time they're little chicks without any feathers um, to the time that they're like grown ass chicks, large chicks, they are eating the poop of their offspring. Um, oh, there we go. And so that was one of the most bizarre encounters that I saw in the nest. And over and over again, um, I got to see the mother in particular feeding the chicks. And immediately, the moment she puts a worm into their mouth, they poop something out and she's right there waiting to consume it back. An efficient, like one in, one out system. I love Extremely it. efficient, yes. So I, I want to mention, uh, Last time I checked, the chickadee is a bird. Plus, I saw a video of birds with their mouths open. So that's at least one drink. Ooh. Oh, the chat didn't miss. Okay, They good. saw. Yeah. They're ready. All right. Obviously, we had to start with poop because, again, that is the level of maturity we are at here. Second animal encounter. Tell us about the marsh wren. Yes. So the marsh wren is an extremely, and I'm going to share my screen back, um, angry bird. This is a little bird that shares um, habitat with the seaside sparrow, which is a very special bird that I actually study as part of my avian research. And so when I was spying on animals in this scenario, okay, I was specifically looking for nest predation and understanding, you know, what are the nest predators that seaside sparrows experience? And I was particularly looking 
um, for mammals, right? Because those are really common, really understandable predators, right? If anyone's going to prey on a, on a bird, it's probably going to be a mammal. Well, there's a little bird called the marsh wren that is half the size of a seaside sparrow. And just to give you an idea of what the seaside sparrow looks like, this is what they look like, right? So they're, you know, kind of brownish birds. When they're fledglings, they look really angry. And marsh wrens are about half their size, but they have three times the personality and three times the angst, okay? So as part of um, their natural behaviors during the breeding season, the marsh wren, when I tell you their, their hormones are raging and it prompts some really incredible, interesting behaviors, trust me on this, all right? So this, what you're looking at right now, is a nest and in the middle of it is an egg. It's a seaside sparrow egg, okay? Only one egg in there. Watch what happens, all right? So the mother just left the nest to go find some food and here comes a marsh wren. Watch. Y'all see what it's doing? It is poking holes in the egg of the seaside sparrow with no shortage of uh, vigor, all right, watch. Look how much conviction is behind that, right? Like what, what is making you so angry, right, right? And then in the middle of this behavior, it takes a couple of sips of the seaside sparrow's yolk, right? So not only are they, you know, engaging in this hyper-territorial behavior, they are also predators, all right? It doesn't stop here. Watch, so now the, the marsh wren is picking up, flipping over the egg, poking more holes just for good measure. And then it really picks up the egg, okay? And it throws the egg outside <laughs> of the nest, right? And again, literally the marsh wren, all right? This is my eyeball. This is how big they are. Tiny, tiny birds, but wrens across the board, whether we're talking about marsh wrens on the coast or we're talking about house wrens or Carolina wrens that are more inland, they are so territorial that they have been documented uh, engaging in infanticide. Oh, look, it came back. Infanticide of the chicks of other wrens of their own species, even other birds that are much bigger than them. Um, they kill the eggs. They destroy the offspring of any nest that is anywhere near their ter territory, and they do not hold back. But this is the first time that this behavior has been documented in the marsh wren. We suspected this would be the case, given what we know about them. Uh, but it's just nice to like have proof that yes, all around, all the sub, all the different species of wrens are actually extremely angry. That's the marsh wren, y'all. I love seeing behavior like that in birds because we don't talk often about like infanticide or like nest stealing or egg eating when it comes to like dinosaurs, but that absolutely happened with I'm sure so many different species. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like to see how much hormone because wrens during the off season when they're not breeding and the hormones aren't raging they're chill they're not worried as soon as those hormone horm hormones get factored in nobody is safe nobody. same same it's time <laughs> to the summer let's go okay <laughs> among us you already mentioned seaside sparrow uh hit us with the seaside sparrow info and deets and then oh we're gonna play such a fun game i'm very I'm excited. so excited yeah so seaside sparrows are a bird that live on the coast of the u.s on the Atlantic and Gulf side, and they um, live in the salt marsh. Okay, and I'm gonna let's see here. Am I sharing my screen? What just happened? Hold up, hold up. Am I sharing my screen right now, Dustin? No, it's just I'm not. Nathan, you're really okay. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, my PowerPoint froze up just for a second, so I'm gonna go ahead and share this. Um, so, seaside sparrows are very special to my heart. They um, are extremely well adapted to life in the marsh, right? They drink salt water pretty much exclusively. Their eggs can survive underwater for like 30 minutes without drowning. And yes, eggs can drown because birds breathe through the egg while they're developing um, in, inside the egg. I don't know if that was true for dinosaurs. I don't know what happened with them, but I would imagine that maybe it's similar, right? So as part of my research, which again was spying on animals, which is the thing that I'm best at, I was watching a seaside sparrow nest and I got some really cool footage, okay? So this is blurry to be clear, all right? So this is a video camera that's like the quality of like a Dollar General parking lot security this, camera, all right? This, uh, this is from like a Motorola Razor, right? <laughs> <laughs> cool. I heard the word Razor in that context in a long time. Um, so like all I needed to do was be able to identify the animal and see what was happening, but I saw something really unexpected. So what you're seeing right now is a, a nest that has one chick that hatched like five hours before. 
and then two eggs, okay? And the shiny stuff that you're seeing is water. So they live on the coast and they live in a tidal environment, which means that twice a day, the water rises and falls, all right? And sometimes if the nest is too low or the tide is too high, their nests will get flooded, which is never really good for the young, okay? This time, however, if you look in the nest, there's not only two eggs and a chick, there's also this thing. This is a fish. If you don't feel like seeing something sad right now, I would suggest that you close your eyes just as a trigger warning, but this is mad cool, all right? Watch what happens. So this fish swam into the nest, jumped over the edge when the water rose and filled the nest, all right? And then this happened. Boom! The chick was not spared. This fish is about two inches long, two, two and a half inches long, small. The chick, the seaside sparrow chick is significantly larger than like its face. The fish that you're seeing here very blurrily is called a mummy chog. And this is a species of fish that is basically the raccoons of the fish world, right? Um, this species of fish has survived in a variety of changes and dissolved oxygen in the water. They can survive literally in puddles when the tide is low. Um, they can survive changes in pH and acidity, and they have been sent to outer space. This fish was sent to the space station, adults, eggs, and they adapted to a weightless environment with no problem. Like literally they were just fine. And when they, the, the, the fish hatched out of the eggs, they had no problem swimming around in a weightless environment. So it's no surprise to me, while this interaction was like never before published, we recently published this, um, it is not surprising that a fish like a mummy chog would jump into a seaside sparrow nest and eat the chick. Um, so this is one of the coolest, sad, but absolutely the coolest interactions that I ever saw in any of my time spying on animals and specifically seaside sparrows. And with that, I yield back. <laughs> I think this might be the only time we will ever allow such fish on bird slander at Dino 101, but it's okay. That's a crazy interaction for you to, can you tell us a little bit, actually, I'm curious to know, like, how do you set up camera trap? I assume there's like, some type of camera trap, but like, it appears that, like it's in water. So what do you, like, what is that process? What is the technology? How often do you have to go back to check it? Yeah. So that is a video camera. The video camera itself is super cheap super low quality, right? But I have really high quality equipment like a DVR, batteries, all kinds of electronic equipment that was definitely probably not super safe for me to be putting in a salt marsh that gets flooded twice a day. Um, but I basically had all of this electrical equipment in a waterproof case that would get submerged literally twice a day, completely underwater. And then I had a camera, a video camera that was placed on top of the seaside scrum nest. Um, several inches above it, just so I could see whatever was going on. And when I tell you the drama in the bird world, I was just there for one thing, right? I was just there for predators. I just wanted to see, okay, what mammals are finding and eating seaside sparrow nests. But there is infinitely more drama in the bird world than I could have ever anticipated between the fish, the marsh wrens, and all the other interspecies, and even you know seaside sparrow to seaside sparrow drama. I just couldn't wrap my mouth, my mind around all of it. So I encourage anybody, if you have the opportunity to spy on animals, it is the most rewarding experience. Like literally when I would get my little memory cards back, it was like Christmas morning because I knew there was about to be some soap opera situations going on on the camera. You know what I'm saying? So that was essentially um, what it took to capture those moments. And it was, it, it always felt like the cameras were hanging on by a, a wing and a prayer, okay? Uh, pun intended. But thankfully, we were able to still see some cool stuff uh, like the mummy chog and the seaside sparrow. Nice. All right. Yo, that's, and you, wait, that was part of your thesis, that video? Like, what, did you, you just got a degree? Are you, wait, is it a doctor? What did you just, uh, what did you no, graduate from? What did you not graduate? doctor, yeah. So that was part of um, a master's thesis. So my research focused on understanding how predation threat varies across the landscape. Like, are birds that are closer to the roads or to the river? more likely to get, you know, depredated. And it's one of the many pieces in the issues that relate to climate change. There's a lot of interactions going on there. Y'all can't ask me about, listen, look how much I got through this line. Now I'm, <laughs> my thoughts are like this. But um, yeah, so it's part of my thesis, right? So like I wasn't definitely like not looking for recording or certainly not publishing anything about fish drama. Like 
I love fish, but I can't publicly love fish. You know what I'm saying? I know. When I saw that, yeah. I had to let the fish get the dove. Like, I hate to do it. I hate to see it. That's fine. But I had to let the fish get the dove. And that's that's fine. That one time. That uh, one time. <laughs> Karina, I'm hoping you get the dove in the game we're about to play. This is a brand new game. I'm going to bring all the contestants to the four. So we obviously have you. We obviously have Christina, our co-hostess with the Moses. We have to add M as well, who usually would administer the whiteboard challenge. But tonight, because we're doing this instead, is here to compete in our brand new game. And last but not least, if I can find his screen, we had to have at least one dude repped. Where did he go? It is uh, probably the person I've known the longest of anyone here. It is my best friend from childhood. John, are you in Blair Witch Project? What is happening? Right. What you, you're, I'm gonna ask. Yo, we're, we're living it up here in Columbus, Ohio. The uh, storm came through, knocked out all the power, but I've got candles below me. Okay, all right, this is very romantic. Um, I like in the chat, Jay just said, you can't give John a platform, which historically <laughs> has been true. So we'll see how this goes. We'll see how this goes. All right. Here's how this is going to work. We're going to play a game that I have blatantly stolen from my new favorite podcast, Take Line. They play a game called Take Survivor, where only the strongest takes survive. But I can't call it that because they're already doing it. So we are calling it Opinion Dominion. That is right. But also here, only the strongest takes survive. So here is how this is going to work. There's going to be three rounds. I'm going to ask you guys a question. Uh, obviously, each question will have its own like context. Each of you will have like 15 seconds to give us your best take on it. And then, and then, fair audience, your votes will be determining who gets voted out of the <laughs> Dominion until we're left with one champion for our brand new game. Are you guys excited? Who boy. Woo! Okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> Round number one. We're going to start with Karina, then we're going to go to Christina, then M, and then John. Question number one. Karina, who is the most underrated Sesame Street character? Without question, the most underrated character is Bert of the Ernie and Bert pair. Okay. And the reason is because he is obsessed with pigeons, which nobody likes, right? People hate on pigeons like it's their job. And very few people like Bert. He's a Debbie Downer, right? He doesn't have an exciting kind of plot line to his life. But I love Bert. He's underrated, and I think more people need to appreciate the things he cares about and what he has to offer the world. Hell yeah, he's into pigeons. Those are dinosaurs. Can't yeah. go wrong there. Christina, who is the most underrated Sesame Street character? The most underrated Sesame Street character is the Count. Ooh, he loves to count, and I love someone who just knows what they like. Okay. Second of all, like my family, he's a Slavic immigrant to Sesame Street. Okay, he's come to Sesame Street. He is the American dream. He's in a castle and gets to be in a STEM career. No! He's doing the work. And he's a steward to animals. He's got a castle full of bats and cats. He's a friend to wildlife. I love the count. All right, Em, hit us. What is, your mo what is the most underrated Sesame Street character? Okay, I was a Grover stan in third grade, embarrassingly. And I think he is very underrated because one, he's the only Sesame Street character with a secret identity. He is super Grover. He's blue, the most popular color for children. And he's got the wiggliest fucking arms. <laughs> <laughs> okay, M coming in hot with the wiggly arm take. John, who do you believe to be the most underrated? I don't know about all the wiggly arm stuff, but Telly, Telly Monster. Telly Monster who? is the most underrated. And if you said who, it's because he needs more respect. He is the one that will befriend everyone. How many people will befriend Oscar the Grouch? All right, everybody needs a friend. He's your guy, all right? And also, he's the worrier. All right, on Sesame Street. So if he's the one keeping everybody safe and out of trouble, Telly Monster, that's the one. Okay, so John believes Telly Monster is the most underrated. He's the back one to keep people safe. And, and his favorite tri uh, favorite shape is triangle. <laughs> okay. Wait, y'all know that. Like <laughs> okay. M goes with Grover and the wiggly arms. 
Christina goes with the count, teaching us all about STEM. And then Karina, Bert, the pigeon, the dinosaur lover. All right, guys, I'm about to open this poll. Remember, you are voting for who is getting booted, who had the weakest take in this first round, who's got to go. Please vote it. now. Who has to leave Dustin's opinion dominion? Who's I'm leaving scared. opinion dominion? Oh, John. Oh, John and Am neck and neck. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez, oh, come on. Oh, oh man. boy. I never hard to watch, before. actually. Oh, this is tough. This is tough. This is, listen, Karina, as someone from Georgia, you know how important voting is. <laughs> who, who just said, yeah, John's got to go? <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> All right, we have 94% of the vote in. Great voter turnout. We're sharing the results. I'm sorry, John, but oh, you no. must leave opinion, dominion. Do you have any final words? <laughs> Telly Monster is rolling over in his in his grave right now. No, Poor Telly grave. Monster. He's no, dead? No. He should. He probably is because everyone yeah, forgot okay. about him. <laughs> All right, John, I have to remove you. We'll see you, I'm sure, in the after party. Thank you. Hopefully you get power. Wait, are you removing me from the entire session? <laughs> yeah, hi. Yeah, you got voted off the island. This is how this works. Bye, John. All right, here we go. That was the first <laughs> round of Opinion Dominion. Round number two, your prompt. We're going to go in a different order. We're going to go M, Christina, then Karina. Second prompt. Listen, Karina is from, you live in Atlanta. You're from Atlanta originally, right? No, I'm from Philadelphia. Oh, that's right. Duh, you're Phil. Duh, you're Philly John. That's right. You, but you <laughs> live in Atlanta now. And Atlanta has some great sports team bird mascots, including the Atlanta Thrashers, the Brown Thrashers, the state bird of Georgia. We also have the Atlanta Hawks and the Atlanta Falcons. Which of those is the best bird? The Thrasher, the Falcon, or the Hawk? M. Take it away. Sorry, Falcon? Falcon. Who are you? Falcon. Falcon, Falcon. I don't know. Well, I'm on. Team Falcon. I'm literally drawing a Falcon right now for my book review website. Okay, Bullshit. Okay. Um, okay. They are the fastest dive bombing birds. Also, they're the only birds that have been caught up in an international egg smuggling ring, I have learned this week. It's wild. There's so much crime, and it's mainly to do with falcons because they're so sought after in falcon racing, which is a popular sport in the Arabian world. Anyway, Team Falcon, forever okay okay M sharing with us all the things she's learned about falcons this week which i appreciate uh christina which of those birds do you believe to be the best it's all about the thrasher oh, first of all interesting. first of all badass name one of the most badass names i think in all professional hockey and in bird dumb it's gonna thrash you uh it's a type of mockingbird so it's not gonna take your shit it's gonna make fun of you uh, I also learned that in some Native American folklore, it represents free will. So it's using its free will to diss you. It's a mockingbird. Um, also, they're incredibly defensive of their nest and are known to draw blood. And it's already the Georgia state bird. The people of Georgia have spoken and we know how important that is. Ooh, all right, all right. Wait. The strong take about the Brown Thrasher, State Bird of Georgia. Karina, who you repping? Yeah, so I just want to call out Toby Wawa for life. Yes, you're correct. Okay, the bird that I'm repping is the hawk because hawks, it's, I'm thinking of the red tailed hawk specifically, right? Okay. Okay. You see hawks everywhere, you can see them in the most pristine and like catchy kind of wildlife environments, like a state park. And you also see them in the hood. The hawks have seen everything. When people are shooting off guns across the street from where I am, there's a red-tailed hawk unfazed, right? Hawks are the one bird that in my experience, when they get mobbed and attacked by little birds like the thrashers, they don't care. They go on with their life. They've seen everything. They um, are unfazed by the, the hood and the urban environment. And then thirdly, they're called, their, their family or their group name is called the Bootios. Booty. The Bootios? Bootios. I oh. lack a booty and so I am drawn to things that have one. Um, and so that is my argument for hawks being superior. Speaking my language very strongly right now. <laughs> With, with the hawk and the booty love, uh, the hawks have seen some shit. Christina, you made a good point. I mean, it's literally the people of Georgia have already voted. It is the official state bird. And then M, we've talked about falcons or falcons here on this platform before. 
who doesn't love a good Sky Lamborghini? It is time to vote someone else out of my opinion, Dominion. Remember, you're voting for who's got to go. Who are we kicking out? Is it Karina, Christina, or M? Who's staying for the final round? Who's got to go? I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. Go? Like, oh, oh, no. I didn't think I would hate seeing votes next to my name. But whatever, haters. <laughs> I can't believe you all hate me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, uh, we've got 78% of the vote in. All right, we're up to, wow, up in the oh. 80s. It looks like, oh, it's getting a little bit closer. Christina, could you be voted out? I could. I'm shaking. There are a few votes. Christina, left. I'm scared for us. us. <laughs> Hold me. Two we votes. don't, I don't like conflict. We do, we do love you, Em. Drew, you're right. We love Em, but it appears you, as though. Well. M has ah. been voted out of <sighs> Dominion. I'm sorry, M. Do you have any final words before we kick you out of this square? <laughs> Be gay, do bird crimes. <laughs> Be gay, do bird crimes. Yes, absolutely. Bird crime. Hmm, yes. All right. We have come down to the two that I was hoping it was going to be. Now, here we go, our last round. This is a question which we have talked a lot about here on Dino 101, and I would like to say this will be the last time we talk about it. We are retiring it, but this is the final say for both of you guys to uh, share your takes as well as in the chat. Tell us your opinion. I think if you've ever been here, you know exactly where this is going. We're going to go Karina first, and then Christina, waffles or pancakes? Okay. I have to go with waffles and I have to go with waffles every time. The reason why is because in the waffle syrup or the pancake syrup scenario, I picture myself as the syrup. When I pour syrup on a pancake, it disappears. It's just absorbed. I don't exist anymore. When I pour syrup on a waffle, I can still see myself. The syrup maintains its identity. It just gets pulled in the sockets of the, of the waffle, right? You can distinctly say I am eating waffles and I'm eating syrup. Mm -hmm. On top of that, and this may point to my own cooking ability, but nonetheless, pancakes exist to choke you. They choke you out. They take up all the liquid in your body. I eat a pancake and I can't, I can't breathe and I can't swallow anything. Okay? They're like the, what do you call them? Y'all, I didn't drink all this wine. The Popeye's biscuits of the breakfast world and I have oh. no interest. Wow. Wow. Okay. First of all, people in the chat are very mad that I brought up waffles versus pancakes again, but obviously. <laughs> Second. The fact that pancakes choke you is very funny to me. Strong take out of Karina. Christina, I know you have a different take. What is I it? I do. My take on waffles versus pancakes is who gives a fuck. If you <laughs> like one, then eat it. If you like the other one, then eat that one. <laughs> I love the texture of a waffle. Yes, the little pockets for butter and syrup are dope. I have just as many, if not more, fond memories of a pancake morning. They're easier to make. You don't need special equipment. So I've had more pancakes in my life than waffles. Point is, we're all going to be extinct soon. So eat what you like. My liking <laughs> waffle doesn't take away your pancake. The number of turns that opinion took is just too much for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the two, the two takes I've heard, I've heard from Karina that waffles are superior mainly because pancakes will choke you out. And... Oh, wait, from Karina. And then Christina said, it doesn't matter. Eat what the fuck you want, which is also the correct answer. I believe both of these are the correct answers, but only one of you can prevail as the first champion of my opinion, Dominion. So for this time, guys, you are not voting on who you're kicking out. You're voting on who is winning. Who is our opinion, Dominion champion? Is it Karina or Christina? Please vote now. Oh, now they're voting for the one that we like. Yes, you're voting yes. for the winner, which is okay. the one that you believe to be the better take. Oh, Karina, I see your bar just scooting on to the right. Wait, wait. Don't speak too soon because I see. Yes. Like, we got to get the mail. The absentee ballots are coming in. We can't, we can't, can't call Stop this. The count. Oh this is why the count wasn't invited because you just, you just keep counting. Just keep counting. <laughs> All right, we have 88% of the vote and I want to get to 90%. Can a couple more of you vote? Nope, apparently not. 88%. Oh, yeah. oh, wait, there we go. 90%. It has happened. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner, the inaugural winner of Opinion Dominion is Karina Newsom. Congratulations, Karina. Wow. Do you have any words you'd like to share with all of us? 
I just want to say I expected to lose both games on tonight, and I've won them both. And so I'm very excited. Thank you all. Thank you. Christina, do you have anything to say, you loser? <laughs> Clearly, I love conflict and picking a side. Uh, so here I come to talk some shit. No, Karina, uh, you crushed it. This is for you. There we go. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Uh, the 27 of you who wanna wanted me to be the winner, what are you doing later? <laughs> They're going to the after party, duh. Oh, so yeah. The party. Party. Until we talk about the two more animal encounters. Christina, I'm sorry, you got booted. You're, you're out of opinion, Dominion. Bye for now. Uh, Karina, you just so. mentioned red tail hawks, but you also told me you wanted to talk about the Harris hawk. Tell us why That's you right. want to talk about the Harris hawk. So Harris hawks, no pictures for you on this one. Harris hawks are my favorite. So I mentioned the red tail hawk. I love them. But when it comes to animals to work with, Harris's hawks are superior. They're a really popular bird when it comes to falconry or hawking, which also includes hawks, right? You can train birds of prey across species, owls, hawks, falcons, to hunt with you. Harris hawks are like the dogs of the raptor world. They're very quick learners. They are easy to build trust with, and they're just a lot of fun. And also the females are a lot bigger um, than the males. And Harris hawks are matriarchal, which means that the, the females kind of run the show. Um, they're also referred to as the wolves of the bird world. So unlike other raptors, which are pretty solitary outside of the sexing season, um, Harris hawks, they run in packs. They actually hunt in packs. They'll hunt in packs of like, oh yeah. Five to see, I'm saying five to six birds, and the female, the oldest female, is the one that's calling the shots. And if any of this other birds, especially like the younger males, if they do anything that she does not want them to do, she like immediately attacks them. Like it, it is not a game. It is not a game. And so because of that, um, work when, in my work working with birds, Harris hawks have been my most favorite bird to work with because you can do anything with a Harris hawk. I've taken Harris hawks on walks literally where I'm walking around the zoo and the hawk is following me and I'm, you know, tossing out pieces of rat, right? Very easy. Well, as part of my work as a zookeeper, so I started out in the world of conservation as a zookeeper and I was working with a lot of birds, Harris hawks, of course, as I said, being my favorite. And I specialized in animal training as part of this work. So that meant that I was doing a lot of trust building with animals especially birds, because birds, aka dinosaurs, are my favorite. And because Harris hawks are really easy to train and really easy to build trust with, we can do a lot of fun behaviors with the Harris hawk that I was caring for. So one of the behaviors that we were like, you know what, this would be a lot of fun to do for our education, for our shows, to kind of show off what Harris hawks are capable of. We decided, hey, what if we could train our Harris hawk to catch a mouse flying in midair. Now, the mouse was not flying because it had wings. The mouse was flying because we threw it into the air. All right, just to be clear. Um, and it was already dead, so no, no concerns there. So we trained our Harris hawk. We would throw a mouse into the air and our Harris hawk, this is all outside by the way, would swoop in and catch it with its talons midair. Literally so cool the coolest thing I've ever trained or participated in training any animal to do. And it's just like, wow, like, you know what I'm saying? So after like months of getting this behavior down pack, making sure the bird was comfortable with us throwing the mice, the, the thawed mice in different places and at different times and different locations, we're like, all right, he is good to go. He's agile, he's a Harris hawk, they're hunters. This is what they do. So cut to, his name is Diego, the Harris hawk that I work with. Cut to Diego's first show. First time doing this behavior in public, in front of several hundred people, all right? So we said, all right, Diego, come on out. We let Diego out. Diego commences this very majestic flight over the audience, right? The crowd is wild. People are screaming in excitement, just seeing a hair sock fly over their, over their heads. And here I go, I'm doing the show. So I got a little mic on. I got the wet, thawed, dead mouse in my hand. Diego flies up. I throw the mouse in the air. He catches it. I'm like, yes, right? Like the crowd is screaming like, yes, go Diego. Tell me why Diego catches the mouse, but then it slips, right? We have gone over this at least 15, 20, 30 times. That wet, dead adult mouse 
slips out of his talons and lands on the neck, the neck of one of the audience members. When I tell you, I have never had. <laughs> horrifying experience as an educator. That mouse fell from 15, 20 feet in the air and landed right here on an unsuspecting man. Thankfully, that man was very chill. He took the wet, thawed mouse off of his neck and handed it to me. He said, here you go. I said, sir, thank you. I am so sorry. <laughs> that could have gone wrong in so many different ways. And I don't even want to think about it because even to this day, like two, three years later, it makes my heart palpitate. Y'all, that was the most, the combination of embarrassing, terrifying, and also like comedic in retrospect only moments that I had working with Harris Hawk. I love when shit like that happens in like a live scenario because like in the moment you were so terrified, but now you look back like that was one of the greatest moments ever. I ah! love that stuff. This is so good. People in the chat were enthralled, riveted, couldn't wait to hear what happened. Oh boy. I'm looking at the gallery, seeing the number of hands over mouths. <laughs> <laughs> the mouse was wet, y'all. Wet, in addition to being dead. Is that what did it, he like it better that way? Well, it was like we thawed the mouse in hot water. And so it just was like, you know, we wanted to be as fresh as possible after thawing. So that meant it was a little bit wet, a little damp. So we hit with a smack. You know, it hit with a smack on the man's neck. Did you have to put up a sign that said you may be hit in the neck with a dead, wet mouse? Is that like a, a waiver type of thing? Damp, the, the phrase damp mouse is very funny to me. This is Diego. He will only eat wet mice. He doesn't eat them if they're anything less than damp. <laughs> Bring me your moist mice. Oh my okay. God. All right, we, we got This mouse is too dry. <laughs> Find me a man with a neck. <laughs> oh boy. Um, anyway, you want to tell us a story about a screech owl? Because I think that's what was next. Oh shoot, y'all, this is too much for me. All right, um, I'm gonna share my screen again because I need y'all to see this. I need y'all to see this owl. She's my favorite. She's a blessing. Um, okay, so. Um, like I said, my specialty as a zookeeper wasn't really in like a specific group of animals. I was working with a lot of different animals, but my specialty was in animal training, which takes a lot of trust building and a lot of time kind of discerning how different animals, whether we're talking about different species or we're talking about different individuals of the same species. Personalities vary just like with people. Not to anthropomorphize. All right, so. This owl, her name is Rhonda. She, whoops, there we go. She, unfortunately, when she was a chick in the nest, there was a storm that came by, knocked her out of the nest. Y'all, this wine is hitting me like a bag of bricks. I'm sorry. A, a storm came by and knocked her nest out of, the, out of the tree. Her siblings were fine, but she sustained this really like severe eye injury that pre prevented her from being able to like have good depth perception which for an owl and any hunting bird is like super important to survive and hunt. So Rhonda came into the care of the Nashville Zoo where I was working and I was tasked with being her primary trainer. Owls are notoriously very skittish. It's, it, it's almost impossible to get an owl to not be anything less than petrified, especially if they're wild born and imprinted on their parents, their owl parents. Owls are very hardwired when it comes to their instincts. We got Rhonda. Her name was originally Ron Burgundy when we thought she was a, a, a male. She's a female, so she's Rhonda now. This is Rhonda. Um, and I just wanted to also show y'all what she looks like during the malting season, right? So when she's malting, which happens once a year, she gets this kind of male pattern baldness situation <laughs> going on, um, which I just love, right? Anyway, so Rhonda, especially the small owls, right? Very kind of skittish and afraid of almost everything going on around them. When they told me I had to train this owl, I was like, do y'all hate me? Rhonda, okay, would panic anytime anyone entered her enclosure. She would panic anytime anyone approached her with a glove. So you see in this picture, whenever we're dealing with birds of prey, big or small, we're always wearing a glove because they've got super sharp, super spiny talons. 
because she's an owl and because she's a small owl, like I said, it took, takes a lot of time if there is even enough time in the world for her to trust anybody. So I would sit in Rhonda's enclosure for two hours every day for two months. Y'all, if anyone has a full-time job, like nobody has that kind of time, right? So like, I'm like, I got something to do. Like this owl is not trusting me. So every single day in the cold, in the heat, it was like the transition from spring to summer. I was in Rhonda's enclosure, sitting down on a log, losing circulation in my legs. And I would cut up a little piece of mouse, right? Cause they love, you know, they're carnivores. They love their mice. And yeah. so I cut off just a little leg. Was it wet? Was it a wet mouse? How wet was it? It was a wet, was a wet mouse. Yes, usually okay. it was wet, yes. <laughs> a wet mouse leg, you know, very small. I would place it next to her and then I would sit down and sit in there with her for one to two hours. She would never even look at the mouse leg because if she looked away from me to go eat the leg, that was her putting herself in danger. I could attack her, eat her up and she would exist no more. After two months of me sitting in the, when I tell you the heat y'all, sitting in the heat, sweating, losing circulation in my, in my legs, just watching this owl be terrified of me. I just thought she was a lost cause. You know, I was like, you know what? She's done. There's nothing I can do to make this owl comfortable. There's nothing I can do to make her feel like she can trust me enough to eat the wet mouse leg next to her on her perch. Then one day I came into the zoo. It was uh, like seven in the morning, butt crack of dawn. I said, you know what, Rhonda, you know, let's try it again for the 120th time, probably. That's too long. Maybe the 60th time. There we go. So I went into her enclosure. I, you know, I went and cut, an, cut me a nice wet mouse leg. I put it on her perch. I moved away. I sat down and I was sitting there for probably 20 minutes. And then all of a sudden she took one step towards the mouse leg. And I was like, never, never has she even acknowledged the presence of that mouse leg. So I'm like tearing up. I'm like, there's no freaking way. There's no freaking way this is happening. She takes another step. I'm sitting there like about to pee my pants because I've been sitting in her enclosure, okay? For two months, she doesn't want to be around me. And then all of a sudden, she reaches down, looks away from me, and eats the mouse leg. And that was the beginning of a very fruitful and healthy relationship for Rhonda, in which that was the moment, that was the breaking point, when she realized, okay, these people that are providing these wet mice for me are actually trustworthy. And the thing that taught me, I want to say this, okay, animal training makes you a better friend because when you're dealing with animals y'all you cannot convince them to trust you with your words you can't say oh yeah like i'll be there at this time oh yeah i'll give you the food you you need oh yeah like you, i won't hurt you all you have to work with is your behavior right when it comes to people we have that extra language element right so we can manipulate each other we can hurt each other we can disappoint each other but you don't have that liberty with animals they know what you're about from jump and you can't fool them and so it really taught me a lot of patience and it taught me a lot of what it looks like to be consistent, right? And to invest consistently into a relationship. And it made me think about my friends, y'all. It made me think about my friends. How am I showing up for them? How am I proving through my behavior that they can trust me? Y'all, animal trainers make the best friends and probably husbands too. I haven't tried that yet. And spouses and, and wives and, you know, whatever. Else. Like partners, listen, if you have a choice, get an animal trainer as a partner. Okay. And with that, I yield back. <laughs> I love that. special. Don't tell someone you're going to show up. Just fucking show up for them. There it is. Show up for them. I love that. I love that we ended on that high note after the moist mouse neck situation. No All right. Um, Christina, we should take two to three questions from the chat before we go into our, what I assume to be a, a tremendous micro raptor paleo art gallery. It's true. Uh, here's a last minute reminder. Draw your micro raptor. We'll do a paleo art gallery walk at the end for you to show off your micro raptors enjoying the beginning of their vaxxed girl summer. I love that. Vaxxed girl summer. I love that. It's, it's upon us. Wait, who came up with that? I, vaxxed girl summer? I said, yeah. That's what I put in the chat. That's what I'll take credit. Like, is that a thing or did y'all just say that? Like, I said it. Christina just said it. That's a movement. <laughs> At least a hashtag. Uh, yes, for sure. Okay, I'm going back through the chat to find questions. Again, send them to me. Uh, we'll make sure that they go on to Karina. 
Uh, what I see in all caps here is tell us about the hummingbird. <laughs> so what's just talking about hummingbirds? In general? Oh, the hummingbird. Oh. Wait, somebody said vax and wax. When I tell you, yes. Live your best life. Yes. <sighs> I need to get on that level. Yeah, that's the vibe this summer. Uh, yeah, do you want to tell us about the hummingbird? Sure. I So... George Audubon, where I work, has the only ambassador hummingbird like that's known in the world. Hummingbirds are like the size of bugs and really hard to keep alive because they like have really fast metabolisms and stuff. And our one of our staff members is a wildlife rehabber. She takes care of this hummingbird that she has to feed like around the clock and has been doing that for three <laughs> three years. He's three years old. And we his name is Sibley. If you're a bird person, he's named after David Sibley, who's like a bird ornithologist, you know, ornithologist and makes all the field guides. And we take him. To education programs right now he's doing virtual programs only and he, you know those like wristbands that are kind of thick they're rubber those are his perches he sits on them and he loves them and he's a male so you can see like the super like cute shimmery ruby throat um simply is just i'm sorry <laughs> it's a national treasure a treasure the hummingbird um, we're going to go from heartwarming to scary. Uh, if you're still, if <laughs> I have a question in the chat for you, uh, deep sea or deep space. Ooh, Which great question. Scarier. Sounds like something we should have on Opinion Dominion, but yeah, you got to pick one. Wait, wait, here. I'm going to, I'm going to give you a little bit of like a caveat here. You don't have to actually go. Like, it's okay. not like we're going to go to one or the other, mm -hmm. but just generally deep space or deep ocean. This is for me? Yeah. I have to say deep space, because I feel like deep ocean, we have, I mean, there's always something weird, something that you would never expect going on in a deep ocean, right? Mm -hmm. But I feel like deep space, we know less about, I think, right? And so it's just like, there's more room. I don't know, it's just more of a mystery to me. Like, mm -hmm. I expect some wild shit coming out of deep space, or deep ocean, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, deep space? <laughs> Y'all, I think this whole bottle of wine and I'm, I'm, I'm done. Deep space for me. Really, listen, there, I think that's the correct answer. Personally, I think that's the correct answer. Plus, fish live in the ocean and fuck fish. Fuck uh, fish. <laughs> <the water laughs> but deep, I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff going on in deep ocean. I'm not, I, I, have, to, I have to, I'll give them that, but fuck fish nonetheless. Hot take. Uh, can you talk to us about your relationship with binturongs? Yes. Do y'all want to see some videos or no? Uh, we have. Can we keep it on like a minute or two? Hell yeah. We want to. I think. A we minute. Okay. Real quick. Real quick. Quick. All right. Got it. Wrong is. All right. So. That. Hold on. Hold on. Hold Rhonda. on. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Rhonda. <laughs> Rhonda. All right, we so love you, Rhonda. Binturongs are these big, muted animals. They have really long tails. They're very fluffy. They're from Southeast Asia. They're built for climbing, but sometimes they run on the ground super awkwardly and they wrestle each other, like what's happening right now. So these are two cousins, Wilbur and Willow, and they love playing with each other and they're awesome. They smell like popcorn, which sounds good, but it's their pee that smells like popcorn. And so like, when you think of that, it kind of ruins popcorn forever and ever for you. And like, because of the fact that we would like kind of hold them on our shoulders. So this is um, what it looks like when we're kind of doing education programs. We would literally put them on our shoulders, which means that they're on your neck and they're in your hair. So whatever pee and whatever diarrhea, which is a very much a common, <laughs> I'm not diarrhea, but like stool that you don't want on your neck. That would happen pretty frequently. We would get it in our hair and we would get it on our necks and on our collars. Um, but you can't tell from afar. So it just, it just looks like a lot of fun. But Venturons, are super cool animals. Um, they look like a combination of a bear and a cat. So they're also called bear cats. Um, that is me posing for a picture that never happened. All right. And with that, I <laughs> will stop sharing. We have some We have some people that are literally in Cincinnati right now. Cincinnati Bearcats. Great shout out. Oh, All right. hey, hey, hey. All right, it's time. You guys ready for this paleo art gallery? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. All right, here's what we're gonna do. If you guys can hold up your renderings of Microraptor being vaxxed on a hot girl summer with you. Uh, we're going to go around the room. Christina and Karina, please feel free to comment on these drawings. I'm going to get rid of our screens for a second so we can actually see these big 
All right, we're going to start with Stacy. Digital Tricera Hops. Oh, I like that. Okay. Aww. Wait, I'm sorry. Did she draw that? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. These Just are now? always tomorrow. they're always so impressive. Wait, today she do that? Like Tonight? in the last hour is <laughs> it's okay. It's it's reversed. It's all right, Stacy. We like it backwards. It looks great. It's right. Wait, it's holding. It's all. Are they holding alcohol? Yeah, hops like beer. I assume. Come yeah. On. Yeah. Hoppy beer. Of course, love it. All right, we we're going to Erica now. Get him, loser. We're going. Oh my god. Yes. I like the casual arm out the side. I like it a lot. <laughs> and from what I'm hearing, you could also put the foot out the side because that's a wing too, right? Or the leg, like. That's a good point. That's a good point. It's a good Pick point. Pick your limb. <laughs> Ooh, look at this one. Hot burb summer. Max in relaxed. Yes, T. Love oh that. Oh, with a selfie stick. Stop oh, it. Wait. <laughs> you see that? That's good. Uh, this is a good crap. reminder, you guys. Please upload these on instant Twitter. Tag all of us, including at drop, the, the, can you drop yeah. our handles in the chat, including Karina's, which is at hood underscore naturalist. We are now going to Mountain Dew's favorite consumer, Michael Baharo. Oh, Michael, exactly. You 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 natural history. I like this. I like this. Wait. Oh, we'll see you there. Favorite place on earth. Oh, AMNH. Oh, that's where you at, Dustin, right? That was, that was best museum on the planet. I love this. We're going on to, oh, I like the pink shirt. Bright for spring. Oh my God. Girl, high five. Oh, we're reuniting with our pals. This is, I, I'm, I'm just bored that this happened in the past hour. I don't understand. They're so good. to us every week. It's unbelievable. Ooh, oh, oh with that pouchy, ouchy band-aid. <laughs> Gauchi Gauchi's a Dustinism. You gotta give him credit. That is true. That the is. eyelashes on it too. Ooh. Yeah. Motion in the face. Yes, yes. Oh, we're talking about sports again. How about this one? Solo volleyball. The Microraptor is so fast, it's gonna play on both sides of the net. I like that. Ooh, okay. And again, like, could be the this wing or the foot wing. Take your, take your pick. Take your yeah. Pick. Incredible. Uh, all right, this next one. Uh, is interesting from from Jada. Yes, Jada. Oh, wait, what's it? Megan the. Oh, Raptor is in the self portrait. <laughs> Upside down twerk. Wait. Will twerk for moist mice. Wow. For anyone who cares, upside down is the only way that I know how to twerk. So I 100% identify with the Raptor. <laughs> oh, shoot. We reached the pinnacle. Okay. So good. Ooh, this is beautiful. Oh, it's a Fauci Ouchie. I like it. I'd show you my leg, leg feathers, but I am waxed and vaxxed. Show me the dick neck. Dick neck? Is that something else that I'm missing? Yep, yep. Uh, okay. The dick necks are the, the term for people here almost every week. Uh, they're the dick necks. And now, guess what, Karina? You are an honorary dick neck. Oh, thank you. Yes. It does, it does refer to long necks, neck sauropod dinosaurs. Uh, but quick sidebar, is this wearing a bra? Maybe bikini top. Okay, all right. I don't know that burbs yeah. have mammary glands, but we'll allow it. We'll allow it. <laughs> oh, I could go over the ovary, you see. Oh, those are great. <gasps> oh, it's for Nick. To yeah. Nick Kaplan. Oh, Evan and Nick forever. Hot summer dog, summer hot dog wedding. Chips are over That's there. <laughs> this is an ideal yeah. wedding, really. We have micro raptors, chips, and hot dogs. Yeah, oh, whoever your wedding planner is, pay them more. This is great. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> Love that. Well uh, done, Stephanie, Andy. we're coming to you. Oh, I like this. There's a lot happening here. Okay. Oh, we have a, a menu. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Let's go. Micro Raptor, micro Bruce. Yeah, yeah. Well yes. done. Yes. I love it. It's the simple joys. I just do want to order a beer at a bar. Back lager, lager. How do y'all say that? The beer drinkers, lager? <laughs> yes, yes. Lager. Lager. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Nice. Lager. Okay. Lager. Uh, Karina, if you weren't impressed yet, oh, just wait. Check this out. Get out, Hannah. Wait. Just kidding. Stay forever. <laughs> oh, you Did can't you, read you this right now? 
they listen. Who do y'all have on these calls, man? You know, right, right. This is beautiful. We can't read the post-it notes. Put in the chat what those say because they're beautiful. Uh, Hannah, ooh, I want to eat that. That looks great. Amazing. Hungry. Don't now. eat it. Keep it like it is. <laughs> Oh, we can't talk right now. We're doing Vax girl shit. Hell yes. Hell oh, yeah. yes, girl. Out on the town with her band-aids and some sun protection. Yes. Oh, my God. So good. Oh, my so gosh. Good. Oh, this, well, this has a little bit different of an attitude. <laughs> oh, they're, they're playing volleyball. Oh, no, there is. If I can just so point bad. out the detail and the feathers, come on. Yes. Yes, the detail. Yeah. Wow. Yes, Nick. Really good. It's really good. Yeah, uh, we're going to Brian next. With lots of kite flying. Oh, it's a that. disco ball. They're not playing volleyball. It was a disco yeah. ball. A disco ball. They're dancing. How stupid of me. Okay. And kites are also birds. So like, there's layers to this. There's layers. I love this. It's very serene. Jojo. Jojo, Jojo tree or coconut. a thick sharpie because I feel like every time you draw a great picture, we can barely see it. <laughs> Christina, do we have do we have anything uh, money in the budget that we can send sharpies out? Is yeah, that... I'll talk to the treasurer. Okay, me. we'll send you a sharpie. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, look at this cute little guy. Yes, I'm with it. I see myself in this in this rendering. I like this, I like this. Oh, we haven't. This is this is different. <laughs> this is different. Ladies of CTD, CTD. Nick, Dee and Ruth. Oh. It's it's part of the uh, bachelorette party. Oh, Hot girl summer! I love it. It's cute. It's very good. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> yeah, do you have a what is that called? What is that that jet, action called? Jet skiing, maybe. I think it's jet yeah. skiing. Yeah. No, okay. the one that goes in the sky. It's a different oh. parasailing. 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 Okay. 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 Yeah. Elite. Yeah. Elite. Elite. Yeah. I like this. This is an elite summer getting back sport. Bring it a little closer. More ra like micro raptor keenies. Yes. Oh, yeah. It just looks like a happy animal, too. I'm here for that. I think that is all. I think we just went through our entire gallery. We've hit every single one. Wow. Those were very great, per usual. I'm going to try to bring, uh oh, I'm going to try to bring all you guys back up. <laughs> To the four. Uh, there's Karina. There you go. That are. necklace, Dustin, also, yes. Listen, I dress up for this event. This is yeah. the highlight of my week, of course. I mean, we don't have any excuse to dress up or leave the house anymore, so. Listen to me. This is me. Um, Feel it. Hey. Where'd you oh, get it from? Totally. So we, apparently, Wawa is now sponsoring this last few minutes of our time together. Oh. Uh, Christina, I'm going to bring you back into the front. So uh, do you have any final last words, Karina, before we bid everyone here adieu? Um, I just want to say, y'all, if you look at literally anything living outside, whether it's a bug, a plant, a bird, a mammal, rare to see a mammal, reptiles, whatever, if you watch it, give it 15 to 30 seconds, you will realize an entire different realm of life. Is there a little bit of this cupcake Moscato talking? Possibly, but I know for a fact that your life will be better if you spend just a little bit of time looking at the life around you, whether we're talking about inner city pigeons and house sparrows, or we're talking about alligators on the swamp, it all has something to offer you. So keep looking close and look for a good period of time. Thousand percent. I love that. Christina, do you have any final words? Hell yeah. We share this planet with some amazing critters. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us, Karina, to remind us to check them out. And you're awesome too. You're an amazing creature. Yeah. As all of you in this room <laughs> as well. And everyone here knows. I agree. It was very touching tonight. I, I uh, well done. Uh, thank you for being the co-host of the Moses. Karina, thank you for joining us. I do want to mention, uh, if you come to the after party, I'm going to dress just like Karina because I have this shirt, which I have not worn yet. Stop I it. feel like we kind of yeah. Wait. Put this on. <laughs> Speaking of after party, it is completely not required and it is not sanctioned by atlas obscure at all if you want to come the link is the same as last week if you do not have the after party link slide into my dms on twitter or instagram i will give you that link last thing i want to say is next week seraphina nance is here she is an astronomer 
and there are no dinosaur constellations. So we are going to work with her to make the very first dinosaur constellations. I'm very stoked about that. That is next week. I'll see you at the after party. But until then, I don't care if you're asking questions, searching for dinosaurs, or you're just an asshole marsh wren pecking the shit out of an egg that is not yours. Never stop digging. I love all of you guys. I love dinosaurs. See you next week. See you in the after party. Thank you, Karina. Thank you, Christina. Thank it's you. It's back from summer. Let's go. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye.